Okay, bonus segment. How to mess it up and what to do about it. Okay. Let's assume you can get through centering, which you, you will be able to. And I'm going to show you the first place that most students stumble. You get the uh, <clears throat> bottom put in. All right, so we've made it through putting in the bottom. Here's the first place that most students mess up when they're making the volcano step. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'll explain how to keep from doing it. Yikes! Notice how big the ring is right here. So the, the problem, the troubleshooting is that the right hand is not rising up following the ring as it goes up. Instead it's simply pushing in and there's a gigantic chunk of clay above my fingers. You don't want a big chunk of clay above your fingers because that makes a weak link, like a weak chain. And this is where it's going to break off ultimately. So <clears throat> notice if I measure this with my fingers, it's only this wide down here, but it's this wide up here. So here's how you remedy that. I'll put it back down to, if I can, put it back down to the donut shape and I'll show you how to remedy it. Okay, so we're back to the donut shape. So again, the secret to making sure this doesn't rip, tear off, is to be sure that both hands are rising up. Now one way you can help ensure that is this index finger, which normally is pointing gracefully out of the way, you can actually let it rest on top of the ring here, so that when you start to rise up, that finger kind of helps you stay right near the, the top of the ring. Here's what it would look like. Here I go, I start to push in on the, the big ring, See how that finger kind of helps me stay near the top the whole time? I'm always very close to the, the rim. Stop when it's a slice of bread. And press. Okay, here's one other way that you can mess up. <clears throat> when you make the first notch after the volcano, the volcano is pretty low, right? It has a, it's a very low uh, cone shape. So if you do... Uh, excuse me, what I call one finger notches, you can get a problem. Watch, watch what happens. If I'm simply pushing in at the bottom right here, like this, see this sharp edge that's forming here? When I start to lift up on that, that, that little ring will often peel away. And then I won't actually see that peeling away now. See how that? Basically, it's a distraction to your, your hand position. So here's the remedy how to make sure you don't get that to happen. So what I'm going to do is when I make the first notch right after the volcano, I'm going to let my thumb rest gently against the wall on the outside. So when I push in to make the notch, here's the difference. I push in to make the notch, but because the thumb is resting against the wall, it's keeping that ridge from forming. As soon as I turn my finger to raise the bubble, I'll let that thumb relax and move away from the wall. And at this point, I can raise the bubble normally. Okay, here's another troubleshooting tip. <clears throat> Alright, say I've made my notch. <clears throat> I start to rise up, raise it up. See the bubble rising up? But then something happens, I get distracted. Oh, maybe somebody's telling a funny joke or somebody's wearing a silly hat and it ruins my concentration and I forget where my fingers are and what, watch what happens. They, suddenly the bubble goes away and I'm, my hands are still moving up and, and now the pot, the cylinder's getting wider. Well, what happens here is what I call finger migration, which means that instead of being in the offset position, one hand above, one finger below, hopefully you can see that, one hand above, one finger below, 
what happens is the fingers moved closer together somehow. Either the bottom finger came up or the top finger came down, and now they're almost right across from each other, which means that I'm simply thinning and expanding the clay out. So the remedy is, as soon as you notice the bubble disappearing, relax pressure, drop back down to where you believe you lost the bubble, and let that inside finger push out to make a bubble, and then that'll tell the outside finger where it needs to be. It'll say, okay, I need to be right under that bubble, reestablish the offset finger position, lock it into place by making point three. See, my thumb here is locked to my hand. That's point three. Without the fingers locked together, see, they move around. So you gotta really lock it in, like, almost like a tool. So I'll show you a couple ways to fix it. If you get this big flare at the top, you can do something called collaring which is you hold your hands almost flat, thumb is like a hinge, and you're going to choke in on the part here that's flared. Do a little bit at a time, don't try to do all at once. And that's how you can bring that flare back in, it's called collaring. So let me reestablish my bubble. So here, I think I lost it about right in the middle. I'm going to drop down, I can feel the thickness here. I'm going to drop down to about right here, and I'm simply going to reestablish the bubble by pushing gently from the inside. See the bulge starting to form right there? There it is, there's the bulge. Okay, there it is. So right hand now knows where it needs to go. It goes right at the base of that little bubble there, that bulge, lock hands together, continue raising up. All right, let's troubleshoot one more thing. I've alluded to that already, and that is if your hands aren't touching together, you haven't locked them together by touching that thumb here or even touching these palms here, uh, then you get a tool that is no longer connected. These two points now can move around very easily. So let me show you what happens if I do that. I'll make a notch. Okay, now my hands are no longer connected. I'm leaning back, which I shouldn't do. And I'm trying to make this bubble work but my hands are slipping around, moving up and down, and I'm getting ridges and bumps and whoops, I touched the seat. Of course I have it. So if you get uh, lots of irregular, irregular throwing rings, see here I've got some wide, some thin areas where it's pushing out too much, pushing in too much. That's typically the result of the hands becoming unconnected or unlocked from each other. Uh, so you, if you want to remedy that, just make sure you're concentrating that as soon, you know, keep your hands touching so that they stay together, or if you have your elbow flying, as soon as that thumb can touch over here to make the bridge, then touch it so you stabilize it. So that's going to stabilize your contact points. How do, you, how do you fix this? Well, the great thing about clay is it's very receptive to, uh, <clears throat> to be fixed. So I can either collar it in if it's flared out, or I can use the rib. Remember what we talked about with the rib? It, it does two things. It takes water away uh, from the surface, but it also compresses. So I can run my rib along the side here by pushing gently from the inside and, and the outside and, and tune up the cylinder here. Here we go. Push in right here. Come on up. So there's a way to tune the cylinder up. It may still need to be thrown one more time. You might want to make one more pass on it. Uh, and we'll do one just to just for good measure. Here we go. I'm going to push. I'm going to push a little from the inside to get that clay out. Here we go. I start to lift up. Thumb is now going to touch. See the bridge I just made? Come up slowly. Relax pressure as you approach the rim because the rim is thinner and it doesn't need as much. Uh, coaxing to move. So there's a, you know, a pretty decent cil cylinder salvaged from a couple of mishaps. Okay. I mentioned in class that you're required to fail. It's perfectly normal to flop several of these. Don't get discouraged. It's all part of the learning process and training your hands uh, to to sense what the clay is doing and sense the limits of the clay.
use another handy dandy trick. If you've got a ring of clay down there, you can take your needle tool, slide the needle tool under the ring of excess clay, and then peel that little snake away like that. Don't forget the notch. Make the notch. Remove the Klingons. Slice it off. Make lots of hand contact, tip it so it releases, set it off, and celebrate! Okay, those are the, the major steps for throwing cylinders, as well as troubleshooting tips. Uh, let's take a look at cleanup, because cleanup is important too, especially with a studio full of lots of eager students. So, I'm going to go ahead and destroy this one. It was a, a good learning experience. I'm not too attached. Practicing detachment. Now this flopped clay that I have is beautiful clay. Throw it back into your bag and re-wedge it later. It makes really excellent clay, so don't throw these away. Also, do not throw any of this clay into one of the barrels. That's a huge waste, uh, and you can reuse that clay. Okay, so I'm going to set this clay aside. We're going to go through the process of cleaning just to show you what it should look like. I'm going to take my tools uh, and my bucket. I'm going to detach the splash pans full of water. And I'm going to take the bat off, which is still gooey. Break that excess clay off. And then we're going to take it over to the eco sink and I'll show you how to rinse things off. All right, I'm here at the eco sink, which is just a big plastic barrel oops, uh, filled with water and a little ledge for putting your tools. So go ahead and put your tools here on the ledge if you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour the goo and the water from my splash pans into the barrel right next to it. It's called the slate barrel. If you need to, go ahead and scrape it out with your hands. Then these plastic splash pans can, splash, splash pans can just be uh, soaked right in uh, the barrel here. I'm going to take the cleanup sponge. I'm going to give them a rinse. Our sustainable initiative here in the studio is to try to make us a, a small an impact. Uh, if we simply throw away all this excess clay, uh-oh, this went all the way to the bottom, I gotta pick it out. Then we're wasting resources, we're, we're, we're wasting energy, we're wasting human energy. And believe it or not, it's human beings that actually mine these clays and they uh, they have health effects from mining clay because of the dust. So the less clay that we throw away, the less impact hopefully we'll have on humans as well. All right, so those splash pans are pretty clean. Uh, that can go right back onto the, the wheel. I'm gonna wash off my bats. And that can go back on the bat rack. So next I've got my tool bucket. I'm going to go ahead and take my tools and set them on the shelf here, the mesh shelf, because I don't want to lose them. They do float, uh, especially if you've <clears throat> got the new wooden needle tool. Uh, so I'm going to leave them there. And then I'm going to take the bucket uh, and I'm going to uh, pour off the water off the top down the sink. It's actually okay to, to pour the what they call the supernatant, that is the water that's sitting on top in the sink. I'm going to pour that off, but I want to show you uh, how much uh, I'm going to leave in there because that's going to go into the slate barrel. I'll put, put this in the sink. I'm back. 
So look at my, my bucket. See where I've poured off all the water and now I'm starting to see sludge at the bottom of the bucket. The sludge goes into slate bearer. Absolutely do not put sludge into the sink. It really messes with the plumbing. So I'm going to take my bucket over to the slate barrel. Get the sludge out. Rinse the throwing bucket. And tools. This can go back on my shelf. Now let's take a quick look at the wheel. Let's clean the wheel up. Okay, back at the wheel, I'm going to clean the wheel head with a big sponge, spin it around the edge, and also clean off the, the work table part of this. It's quick, it's easy, it's fun. Actually, it's no fun to sit down at a dirty wheel. Pop the splash pan back on. And if you're using one of the outside wheels, uh, we've asked you to put the stool up. And you're done. Put your clay back in your bag, and it's ready for the next person. Oh, almost forgot. Don't forget to turn the wheel off. So for the Pacifica wheel, just push the orange button and turn it off. For most of the other wheels, it's a toggle switch that you'll turn it off. Let's clean up the table too. So in ceramics, we always do wet cleanup whenever possible. And wet cleanup means that we're dissolving the clay and the dust into water so that it's easy to pick up and doesn't create dust. So if you're cleaning up the table where you've wedged or you've worked, what you want to do is Take a really saturated sponge and simply flood the area with water. This will soften the clay so you don't have to rub quite as hard. Just give it a, you know, a minute to soften things up and then all the clay that's on there should come up pretty easily. Wring out that sponge and then go over it with a really dry sponge to pick up all the residues. What you're left with is a pretty decent clean surface uh, where the canvas is now free of all the clay residues. If we leave clay residues on the table, after a while your, your clay is going to stick to it uh, and you're also going to pick up chunks or particles that will uh, interfere with your throwing by creating little hard spots in your, in your clay. So that's the correct way to clean up. This really irks me when I find plastic in the regular garbage can. This is one of my biggest pet peeves here in the studio is people not thinking green. So this is sustainability tip number one. We've got single stream recycling here at SHIP, <clears throat> which means that everything on this list can be recycled. Now there are a few things that, that shouldn't be going into the blue recycling container, uh, but most of the stuff you produce in here can. All plastic bottles recycle. Paper, notebook paper, recycle. Cardboard and paperboard, recycle. Metal cans, recycle. What you can't recycle is things like this. Uh, this is plastic sheeting. Uh, it's just not something that they process. So we have to follow the, the list they give us. This is a really big list. We should be putting most of our stuff in here, but things like this shouldn't go in because they contaminate uh, the single stream process and make it more difficult to process the, the recyclables. So put things like this in here if you're done with them and there's no other way to use them. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we also have to throw in wet paper towels uh, in here because uh, they're often covered with clay. Now, I actually knew a person that recycled paper towels as well uh, and, and I'd love to see people do that. So make sure you're separating uh, trash in here. This is a requirement in my studio is that we separate all single stream materials into the blue bins and anything else that can't go in there goes into the regular trash bin. Thanks.